You got your Bibles? Wave them at me. Thank God. If you got them, I want you to turn with me to the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus. I don't usually ask you many favors, do I? But can I ask you one? Can I ask you one? Would you do this for your preacher the best you can? Would you please come back tonight for tonight's message also? Because I'm doing part one and part two, and actually part two is what I want to preach on. But I don't want to jump ahead of myself. And I just asked all of you, all your families be here. To, I, I'll guarantee you come tonight, you'll get something that will help you. Amen. I'll guarantee you that. Um, so I ask you to do that. If you can't, please watch my live stream. Uh, I beg you to do it. I think you'll get something out of it. Now, we're going to wade through some things that probably you haven't heard. There's not a lot of preaching on it. By the way, I'll tell you another subject there's not a lot of preaching on, and I'll hit on it a little bit today, and that's the subject of sin. Yeah. Amen. For some reason, our Baptist preachers, and I'm not going to talk about the rest of them. The rest of them, I don't think they'd say it the devil if he had a pitchfork after them. <laughs> but our Baptist preachers have got so compromising You're right. and so weak and so anemic, yep. they don't preach on sin anymore. You're right. Now, before I get in, I still have a little happy time. Uh, I know Dave Briscoe's up. He, got, he turned 50 this week. Uh, no? Okay. I'm just kidding, Dave. How many people had a birthday so I can wish you a happy birthday last week? I just want to wish you a happy birthday, Dave, and a couple of happy birthday from your pastor. Now turn to Leviticus 13 and 14. How many of you got that bu- them two books memorized? <laughs> How many be honest enough to say you've never really even studied them hard? Well, you have it, but I'll, that's okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to study this, these two chapters. Uh, I won't do it verse by verse, but I am going to deal with it. So what I want to do, I want you to follow me in the Word of God this morning, and I'll do some introductory remarks, then get to hopefully the first and second point of the message and save the last point for tonight. Uh, that's my goal, whether I can do that or not. Chad said, no, we'll see. (laughs) Uh, Are you there? Say amen. Amen. Follow me. Please follow me. Leviticus 13. Let's read the first four verses. Then I'm going to jump down to verse 47, and I'll read 47 and uh, 59. Then I'll jump to chapter 14 and read a few verses there. And then I'll do some introductory remarks, and I'll probably share some stuff you've never heard. And I want to help you today. The Bible said, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then it shall be brought unto Aaron the priest or unto one of the his sons, and the priests. Verse 3. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in his sight is deeper than skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. Now, turn with me to verse 47. Now, if you're noting this in your Bible, in verses 1 through 3, and I'll repeat this in a moment, that's the man that the leprosy is in. Everybody got that? Now, look at verse 47. Now, this is where I started learning a lot. Because I didn't know all this. I've read this a hundred times and never ever dawned on me like it has. Now look at it. 
the garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be woolen garment or linen garment. Now, I can read all that, but let's go down to verse 59. This is the law of the plague of the leprosy in a garment of woolen or linen, either in the warp or woof or any things of skins to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean. All right? Are y'all with me? So far we have what? We have leprosy in the man, right? We got leprosy in the material, the garment. Oh, stay with me. I want to show you something. You probably ain't seen this. I want you to see it because I'm going somewhere today. I want to lay a foundation. Now turn to 14, chapter 14 and verse 33. Stay with me. Please, everybody, stay with me. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, When you come into the land of Canaan, when you cross over from the wilderness to Canaan, which I give you for a possession, I put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession. And he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seemeth to me there is, as it were, a plague in the house. Then the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priests go in to see the plague, that all that is in the house be not unclean, and afterward the priest shall go to see the house. So what we studied so far, Jeff, we have leprosy in the man. We got leprosy in the material. And we got leprosy in the manor, M-A-N-O-R, or house. Some of you are thinking, I ain't never heard that before. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know your Bible, you know that leprosy is a type of sin. Yes. Now, the book of Exodus is the book of redemption. Yes. I'm always glad you've been redeemed by the blood. Yes. Uh, delivered from darkness unto light. Somebody say amen. Amen. But the book of Leviticus is a book of holiness. Yeah. Or we notice the code of cleanliness. I want you to know something. I might as well just say it like it is. There's a lot of people, mankind, who are unclean. You're right. And there's a lot of people whose outward garment is unclean. Amen. And there's a lot of people whose manner or house is unclean, and there is no hope for it outside a supernatural work of God. Amen. I, I, want, I want you to notice this. I'm trying to be slow and methodical, but I'll speed up. Did y'all know, did you know this, that there are 20, actually 21 types of leprosy? The leprosy found in that house was actually different from the leprosy that was in the man. And the leprosy that was found in the material was actually somewhat different than it was in the man. But all three is a picture of sin. Now, some of you are looking at me like a calf at a new gate, but you are going to like this when we start getting into this. Now, the leprosy that is incurable, Joe, is what y'all know as Hansen's disease. That is an incurable leprosy that only a supernatural healing from God can cure. Ladies and gentlemen, mankind has only one hope. Right. It's not reformation. Amen. It's not turning over a new leaf. It's not being as good as you can. Amen. No, it's a supernatural regeneration that can only come from God that would turn an old sinner from sin into righteousness and be clothed with right, white raiment. Somebody help me preach. 
Oh, I'm preaching on. Now, notice again, outline-wise, verses 1 through 43 is the diagnosis of leprosy in the man. Verses 46 through 59 is the diagnosis of leprosy in the material. In chapter 14, 33 through 57 is the diagnosis of leprosy in the house or manner. Now, in all three cases, the priest, after he discovered the leprosy, declared unclean. Unclean. Since there's three of them, amen, I want to preach from this subject today. Unclean, unclean, unclean. That will be my subject all day long. Unclean, unclean, unclean. First of all, let's deal with the unclean, the uncleanness in the man. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you like it or whether I like it, every one of us in this room, when we were born, we were born unclean. Now, in the case of the leper, let's give you three thoughts. First of all, his condition. Here's how it came. First of all, it came as a rising or a swelling. What they would notice is a rising in his skin. Ladies and gentlemen, when skin starts in us, it does not start the way it ends. Oh, maybe I'll say it again. When sin starts in us, it doesn't start in the beginning like it ends. Somebody help me preach. See, there's some of you right now, very, very naive. You think you can live on your edge. You think you can live in sin. You think you can practice that sin and only have a little swelling. Well, you're going to find out differently. In a moment. Somebody help me preach. And then they would see a bright spot. That swelling would end up getting bright. If you study verse 17, and I'm not going to take you all there. Then in verse 15, it would become raw, be raw flesh. And that's when the priest would pronounce unclean. And then there would be a spreading baldness. Brother Chad, uh, <laughs> and then there would be a. It would get deeper than the skin. It would start getting into the blood system, and then in, in verse twenty-three and twenty-five, it would become a burning boil. It would be raw and burning. Can I say a few more things? Leprosy is hereditary. Can I tell you what you got when you were born in this world came from your mom and daddy, and it came from their mom and daddy, and it came from their mom and daddy. Because we, hey man, hey, we're sinners because we trace our sin all the way back to Adam and Eve. Where they sinned in the garden, and we're sinners today because of that sin. And not only that, it's contagious. See, here's what happens whether you like this or not, if you're born in sin and it goes unchecked, unredeemed, no cleansing, it's, it's worse than any coronavirus that you've ever heard of. It's worse than the COVID-19, ladies and gentlemen. It is, it is contagious. 
We see our world today. How many agree with me? We're living in a world out of control. We're living in a world of anarchy. We're living in a world that if it feels good, do it. Hey, we're living in a world you can block off a street in a, in a, in a, in a, in a state and, and just say it's ours. Somebody help me preach. Also, it's incurable. Look at me. If you're in this room lost, what you got, man can't fix. Whether it's in the man, the material, or in the manner, man can't fix it. I know people that are married and people that are in sin and their lives are upside down and they're trying to push all the right buttons, Amen. all the right buttons to fix it. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, there is no remedy for mankind. There's no remedy for your material. There's no remedy for the manner unless there become a redemptive act Amen. from Almighty God. Oh, listen, also it's separating. Now, I'm going to tell my Calvinist friends, the wages of sin is death, and the word death there isn't like a corpse. The word death there is separation. You know what sin does? It separates a mom from a daughter, a dad from a son, you from righteousness. It will separate you then sin is polluting. Oh, yeah. Let's just tell it like it is. I know that some of you won't be back tonight, so I might as well just hit it wide open. It'll pollute you. It'll pollute everything about you. You know, sin will cause you to do things that you thought you would never do when you was a teenager. It'll cause people to get hooked on pornography. It will cause people to, somebody help me. Amen. It'll cause people to get hooked on drugs and alcohol. And somebody help me. You, you, may, you may be in this room tonight. Don't you get mad at me. I'm not preaching to nobody here. I don't know what your ID is. I don't know where you're from. I don't know what you're going through, but I do know this. I do know this, that it'll pollute you. Amen. It'll pollute the best homes. It'll pollute the best material. Amen. Am I preaching? Stay with me. I'm trying to get off of this. Then sin is, will deform you. Let me show you what the result is. Hey, Shannon, that man would get his, his hands would get crooked. Then when it got so bad, he would, his cheeks would go into the bone. His eyelids would be Rotten, and you could see down near his eyeball. Amen, preacher. Are y'all with me? And what started out as a, a little swelling ends up totally separating him, putting him outside the camp, putting him there by himself, withering. And dying, and it keeps increasing, and they pronounce him unclean, and he becomes ugly and deformed. And some of the nicest people I know have traveled down this road, and they are not themselves now. They have been deformed. They have been mangled. They, they look so, so dire. That's why some of you think, is there any hope for that kind of man? Is there any hope for that person that has that material? Is there any hope for his manor or his house? Because sin gets so contagious that we think there's no hope. Y'all with me? And then I want you, second point is the condemnation. 
He's condemned. I'm clean. Listen to me. Before you go out of here, you better listen to me. He that, believe, he that believeth is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Amen. It's not that you're going to go to hell and be condemned later. You're condemned right now. You're sitting, you're sitting on death row right now. Your ultimate fate is hellfire. You are going to hell. You are going to burn forever. Yet there will be no hope for you outside of God intervening. Amen. That's exactly right. Good preaching. I'm trying to be methodical. Now, I want you to jump over 14 for a minute. Stay with me. Please don't turn me off here because you have never read this kind of stuff. Please don't turn me off because I'm going to give you some good stuff. What we had so far, the condition, the condemnation. But, Jeff, I don't want to be like I preached last Sunday morning. When I ended that thing, I couldn't even give anybody any hope. The cleansing. What is the hope? Now, I'll let you examine this as I go through it in 14. You can just look at the first 14 verses with me. There is a cleansing. How many can raise your hand to heaven and say, I know I'm not going to hell? How many can raise your hand to heaven and say, I've been washed in the blood? I know I'm saved. I know I'm... (laughs) What? So here's what would happen. When a man got supernaturally healed by God, the priest had to come in. Now, everybody stay with me. Lord, have mercy. I'm going through note after note. (laughs) And the priest would come in and examine him to see if he was cured. Because the priest knew the only thing could cure him was a supernatural work from God. Sir, ma'am, the only hope for you, your life, your material, and your house is a supernatural work exactly. of God. Amen. So here's what happened. They would, the priest, after he saw that he was clean, would take two birds I'm trying not to get overly excited. (laughs) I really am. Um, But he would take the two birds and he would kill one over running water. You said, what's the water? The water is the word of God. The only hope for y'all, your marriage, your material, and your life is the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. And then he would kill one bird. Somebody help me. You said, what's that one bird a picture of? The death of Christ. Whoo! Then he'd take cedar wood, which is a picture of the resurrection, and hyssop, which is a picture of Christ's humiliation and dying for you. And he takes scarlet, which is the precious blood. Now say with me. Then he'd take that living bird. Hey, Dave, he'd take that living bird and dip it in the blood. Amen. I'm trying to be good. <laughs> and dip it in blood. Show it to him. And then let the blood or the bird fly off. And what that guy saw was Christ in his resurrection who bore his sin and took his sin as far as the east is from the west and and blotted his sin out and made him clean. Somebody ought to help me preach right there. What can 
and wash us from our sin. Nothing but the blood. Then he let him wait. Then he sprinkled seven times on him. What that's a picture of? Complete cleansing, cleanliness. I want you to know what? I'm not halfway saved. I'm always saved. Amen. Now, then, who? They tell me to kind of keep myself and not as animated. I don't want, but I am. Uh, then after eight days, the priest would get two lambs and offer them for a sin offering and a burnt offering. And then what he would do, he'd also get a log of oil. Oh, I'm wanting to run. You know I want to run. And what he would do, y'all all with me? He would t- put that blood in his hand. Come here. He'd put that blood in his hand and he put it right there. Right there. And we ain't going to do it. I don't want to smell your feet. <laughs> then he put one on the right big toe. But that ain't all he done. Then he got that log of oil. Anybody, you can go down there. You say, what's all that about? When I got cleansed from God, I got the blood applied. But at the same time I got the blood applied, I got the oil of the Holy Spirit applied. Somebody ought to shout right there. See, I want y'all to know something. Once I get saved and washed in the blood, I'm sealed forever by the Holy Spirit of God. And I'm eternally saved. Somebody help me preach. Now hold it, hold me. Hey, Greg. Why right thumb? Oh, first of all, why right ear? Because see, you're going to hear some stuff that you ought not to hear. And some of you need to get saved hearing. You listen to too much gossip. You listen to too much ignorance. You listen to stuff from people that are carnal, that are of the devil, and you take it as gospel. You need your hearing to cleanse. And what about this? What we do with our hands, Brother Brodsky, we serve with them. I'll tell you what, we need our hands cleansed. You say, I want to serve God. You need to serve him purely with pure hands. Oh, I'm not done. Why the big toe? Because see, whether you like it or not, we're walking in an ungodly world. Am I preaching? And we need our walk cleansed. You don't need to walk after the counsel of the ungodly. You don't need to go to, you don't need to party all the time, get on social media and act like a fool. You need to walk right. The only way you can do that is by the blood. You know why? There's a lot of people in and out and up and down. I'm going to tell you why. I ain't never been saved. Ain't nothing keeps them in. You're right. And they won't ever, they're so prideful, they don't want to ever admit how lost they are. Right. The only thing can cleanse you is the blood. That's exactly and the only thing can empower you is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now let me go to point two. Y'all doing all right? Because yes. point three is where I want to be. I beg you to come tonight. I beg you. If you love your home, you love your children, you'll come tonight. I beg you. But let's let's go back to chapter 13. 
And let's talk about the material. Will you go there with me? And go with me down to verse 46, 47. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be woolen garment or linen garment, then verse 59, it'll be pronounced unclean. Now, Chad, what did they do for the garment? They did not get a bird and a living bird. They didn't. No, 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 they didn't. And you say, well, what does the garment represent anyway? I'd like to know. What well, represents your flesh? Here's what the garment represents. It represents your habits. Amen. Hey, there's some Christians that got bad habits. If you're social drinking and drinking, you got bad habits. Amen. If you're on filthy, rotten social media, you're, you got bad habits. If you're on pornography, you got bad habits. And then the garment represents their ways. They got crooked ways. And their association, they run around with wicked, ungodly people. And all this is seen by men. So what do you do with the garment? Come up here. You're the leper. What do you do with the garment? Take it off. What do you do with this? Do you put blood on it? This flesh ain't redeemed. No, you don't put blood on it. You take it to a fire. And you burn it. You burn it. See, there's too many Christians that's operating by the, this garment. Just say back there, the, they're operating with this. And what they did with the garment, Chad, is burn it. Now there's a scripture that goes along with that. You know what it is? Make no provision for the flesh. Now let's just be honest. I'm about ready. I'm, I'm, I'm coming in home. Let's be honest. We live too much in this and this is what operates most of our life. Yes, sir. That's why your habits are bad. Amen. That's why your associations are bad. There's too much flesh in us. See, unlike a leper, though, Chad, they got to burn theirs, but I got to live in mine until the Lord comes. So the only thing I can do is die to it every day. Amen. Amen. That's the only thing I can do. I can't burn it. Now one day, oh, let me give you some good, other good preaching. When I die, my good man is going out. And this garment is going into a box. Oh, yeah. oh give me that. And here's what that priest would do. I wish I had the right collar. He would get a white garment. Come over here. And put this white garment on him. A clean one. Praise the Lord. One of these days, I'm going to heaven. And they've got a wedding garment prepared for me. And I'm going to have a white garment. Whoop. I'm whoop, somebody whoop, and I'm going to have one like Jesus. Somebody help me preach right there. Praise God. Amen. See, who am I helping? Thank you. Anybody else? 
<laughs> if you're a man in here and sin, you need saved. If you're a man who's saved and your habits and your occupation and your associations are polluted, you need to burn the flesh and get up on this altar. Why you do what you do? You either go out and sin habitually. Why don't y'all feel bad when you sin? Why do you have to get caught in your sin before you straighten up? Now, that's, there's one or two things the reason. You either lack conversion and you're not really saved, or you seared your conscience with a hot iron and ain't nothing reaches you. Say, man, how long are you going to let this rule you? How long? I'd say, man, or church professing Christian, how long are you going to live in deception until you get saved? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Heads bowed. I beg you to come back tonight. The best part's tonight. Right now, with heads bowed and eyes closed. How many, now, I don't want to ask you if you're a church member. And quit fooling around. Quit fooling around. I'm not going to ask you if you're a church member. I want to ask you if you died today. Are you 100% sure you're saved? I want to ask you. And it's a result. You know God chastens you when you sin. And you know that that... that uh, you're, living, you're trying to live for God. How many right now know you're saved? Raise it up. And don't fool around with me or God. Thank you. How many of you right now say, okay, I know I'm saved, but my garment is filthy. It's polluted. It's abominable. And I've been doing wicked stuff in my garment. How many Christians would raise your hands and say, pray for me? I see them. Why don't, yes, I see them. I see them. Come on, others. I see you. Stand with me. If God spoke to you in this message, I would like for you to come around the altar and pray to him. If he spoke to you, Father, touch the invitation in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen.